Let's talk about security. Almost any system can be under threat. All right? It's under threat from external attack, from hackers. Uh, it can be under threat through policy weakness, or it can be under threat from data integrity. Right? Now, there is a note there that high security is very expensive. Um, and you probably would need a security expert. Now, the reason for that is most developers are well-intended. We're not usually able to think of all the um, devious and possibly underhanded ways in which to compromise the system. It would just never occur to us. So um, the usual caution there is um, get an expert in to uh, help you with that. There are some things that really do need to be secure, even in um, a network that's possibly not secure. As an example, in this university, uh, it's big and uh, a lot of it is fairly open. So we, we, we have uh, a great deal of access by a great deal of people, the, the public, the students, the, um, the staff, um, there are more, um, the administration. Now there are some things we really need to keep secure. Um, the student um, student results is something that uh, in many ways uh, seriously affect our reputation. Uh, if we can't keep the integrity of those results uh, essentially forever, then our integrity can be challenged. So there, that, of all the things in the university, that has to be kept secure. Achieving security? Well, the first thing you have to do is resist attacks. So things like authenticating users, minimizing exposures, limiting access, and providing a buffer between the system and the external world. So resisting it's okay. Now, some of them are going to get through. So we want to be able to, to uh, detect an attack when it's happening or you know, during its, um, yeah, when it's happening. And even some of those are going to, uh, are going to succeed. So we need to recover from attacks. So there are the three different things there. We resist them, we detect them, and we recover from them. Now, past ages faced the same sort of problems of security. Um, when there was a great deal less, you know, more lawlessness. And the way, um, the, the, the way they organized things can provide us with some, um, some lessons. I mean, some people had security through being extremely mobile, uh, but those that were not mobile, they were fixed place, uh, built a castle wall um, with minimal entry points. And those entry points were heavily defended and uh, able to be defended. So we had a moat and we had a drawbridge and we could pull up the drawbridge and make it hard to get at. Or we put a castle up on the top of a hill so it was hard to attack. You had to, you had to uh, attack uphill and that was much easier to throw rocks down and, and uh, defend. So there are lessons there. Um, now, in the same way, secure systems should have very few access points, very few, um, you know, very few ways of getting in, and those those access points should be heavily guarded. That is, um, they have to have some security system attached to them, um, and uh, go on from there. Internal access: some things that need to be secure should have um, access control lists or some other. Uh, further check about just exactly who. I mean, the fact that you're, you're here in this part of the system doesn't necessarily mean you have authority to access this, or you put an access control list in. Um, there, uh, there, there really, in many ways, is no such thing as a perfectly secure system. It's like, um, like so many things. It, it's more a matter of how much time it's going to take somebody to break in and you, you expect and hope that you're going to get um, detect them before they've got through. Now architecturally, uh, as I said, the, um, the tactics architecturally is to make um, less access points and to have them heavily guarded. 